Yeah, you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Call this meeting to order at 5.30 and the Pledge of Allegiance. I uh, just want to tell the board here we need a motion <coughs> to excuse Mr. Connors from tonight's meeting. I'll move to uh, excuse Mr. Connors from tonight's meeting. I'll second, second that. Second. In the discussion, seeing none, hearing none, I'd like a roll call vote. Mr. Galbraith? Yes. Mr. Valentine? Yes. Ms. Senbit? Yes. And Mr. Mabry. Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'd like to make a little announcement here before we get going. Uh, please bear with me, but please listen to these guidelines. Kennewood School Board of Directors appreciate hearing from the community. That's okay. Okay. And until I complete this, I will. Uh, I'm gonna pause. <laughs> and I'm gonna let. Uh, Special recognition occur. So let's see about the special recognition. Right. Apologize. Excellent. Thank you so much. So, uh, yeah, this evening we have um, three items for special recognition. Um, the first is to recognize Native American Heritage Month. So every November is Native American Heritage Month. Um, in our nation and in our state. And so I'd like to start by reading the governor's proclamation. It states, whereas Native Americans have inhabited the area now known as Washington State since time immemorial, and today 29 federally recognized Indian tribes, out-of-state tribes with treaty reserved rights, and other tribal communities reside in Washington, and whereas members and descendants of tribes around the United States and First Nations of Canada also reside in the state of Washington, and whereas Native American contributions and values have shaped the social, political, environmental, and economic fabric of the state, while also enhancing freedom, prosperity, and cultural diversity, and whereas state law, RCW 43.376, directs the governor and state agencies to establish government to government relationships with tribes in order to enhance and formalize working relationships with the tribes through collaboration and consultation. And whereas state law, RCW 28A 320-170, mandates the teaching of tribal history, culture, and government in common schools, which will contribute greatly to improve schools history curriculum, enhance awareness for a better cultural understanding, and whereas substitute House Bill 1356, prohibiting the inappropriate use of Native American names, symbols, or images as public school mascots, logos, logos or team names, was signed into law on April 26, 2021, thus removing harmful stereotypes and barriers to racial equality, cultural awareness, and an equitable education, and whereas the state of Washington has designated the Friday immediately following the fourth Thursday in November as a state legal and school holiday known as Native American Heritage Day, and whereas Washington joins other states across the nation in celebrating Native American Heritage Month, honoring the unique heritage of this continent's first people, and reaffirming the commitment to respect each tribe's sovereignty and cultural identity, now therefore I, Jay Inslee, Governor of the State of Washington, do hereby proclaim November 2023 as Native American Heritage Month and November 24th, 2023 as Native American Heritage Day in Washington and encourage all people in our state to join me in this special observance. So uh, we do recognize uh, Native American uh, Heritage Month here in Kennewick School District and also um, through our recent collaboration and consultation efforts with the Yakima tribe, we have developed a land acknowledgement. As the board knows, it's hanging on um, on the wall here, and it's perfect evening to, to read it as well. And this land acknowledgement states, Kennewick School District rests on the ancestral lands of the Confederated Tribes and Bands of the Yakima Nation and recognizes 
recognizes and honors the people of the Yakima Nation. We honor the native peoples who are tied to the land through history, legends, and culture. We acknowledge their descendants who live here and continue as protectors of the land, rivers, lakes, and inhabitants of the surrounding area. This acknowledgement is a sincere commitment to show respect, continue to build relationships, and ensure our students learn tribal history and sovereignty curriculum in our schools. <clears throat> It was um, wonderful uh, just this past, uh, about a week ago, we had uh, members of the Yakima, Palouse, and Umatilla tribes, uh, including descendants from Chief Kamaikan, of course, the namesake of Kamaikan High School, uh, at Kamaikan High School for an assembly. Uh, they shared history, dance, song, and messages of unity with the Kamaikan High School students. Uh, I was able to be there uh, for the assembly, and it was just a, a wonderful um, celebration and a wonderful event and um, a great you know, reaffirmation of um, the permission that we've been given to continue to use uh, the Kamaikan name for, for Kamaikan High School. So we appreciate Pat Gowdy and uh, all of the people who were there uh, to uh, present at the assembly. I also wanted to just highlight that we've got a committee as well, now a standing committee here in Kennewick School District that was um, formed again as a result of our uh, continued efforts to consult and collaborate. And so we've got a tribal collaboration and education uh, meeting that happens. Um, we started those last year. Um, the first one this year is next Tuesday. All are welcome. The meetings are held here at the um, at the district office and it's a great time for um, our uh, students and families um, with uh, you know tribal affiliation and Native American heritage to get together and for us to um, help better serve our students and families. So I wanted to mention that as well as part of tonight's recognition. Uh, our uh, next item for recognition is uh, to uh, introduce and recognize our foreign exchange students. So BJ Wilson, who is our uh, director of K-12 Student Services, is here to make the introductions and I'll hand it over to you, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, it's uh, a pleasure to be here to recognize our students who are uh, from other countries that get to be part of the belonging of the Kenwick School District this year. Uh, we have three foreign exchange students, uh, but before I introduce our, our students, I would be remiss if I didn't want to say a public thank you to our host families, because every one of our foreign exchange students uh, is part of a family here and we have uh, Richard Jacob and his wife uh, Connie who have Anara in their home. So Anara, if you come on up. Rather than having me do all the talking, we wanted to have the students introduce themselves. So we're gonna have Anara come up and uh, she's a senior at Kamaikan High. Go ahead, Anara. Hello, Hello. Uh, my name is Anara. I'm from Kazakhstan. Uh, so if you don't know, this is uh, Central Asia and the bottom of Russia. Uh, so Kazakhstan is an independent country from 1991. Even we're like a young country, uh, we have thousand year history and uh, I'm really happy to be here now. Uh, and I'm really thankful to my host family, to my school and uh, everyone. One thing that I love here that uh, it's a people, they are really welcoming and that they are really kind. If I had a, like troubles, they really uh, try to help me. If I don't understand something, teachers like, oh, you need a help. We can like help you. You can come to the tutoring if you want. Uh, so I really like that people is really welcoming and the kind and that they really want to learn something new even they don't know like where is my country and like who I am. They really want to know uh, more about me and uh, that's one thing that I really appreciated. Like, yeah, thank right. you. Thank you. That's great. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so briefly, I just want to recognize uh, Michael Lynn and Herman Hellerud, who are not here, and their host families, Michelle Keetsker and Amber and Corey Hatcher. Thank you very much. Okay, 
this one's difficult. <laughs> Um, because we're recognizing our outgoing board members this evening, and it still doesn't seem kind of real that uh, this is your last board meeting, Ms. Sunvik and Mr. Mabry, um, but uh, we wanted to share a few words and, and present you with some appreciation. And I hate saying goodbye, so forgive me in advance if I get a little misty here, but um, <clears throat> I'll start with Ms. Sunvik. Uh, she was elected in November 2019 and has been a dedicated and engaged member of the board. Joining the board during a very difficult time of the pandemic and all of the challenges that came with it. Uh, Ms. Sundvik has been the board's legislative representative and as we all know she's a very active member of WASDA and the uh, larger KSD community regularly engaging in numerous community groups and gatherings. And in her board bio, I went back to read what is in your board bio on our district website, and these are Ms. Sunvik's words. She says, our district's greatest assets are our children, and they deserve to, des to receive the best possible education that we can provide. I believe that we need to have school board members who have hands-on experience with the day-to-day -day activities, operations, and needs of the district students, employees, and community. School board decisions should come from well thought out and researched information in which the community has been involved and listened to with great care. Ms. Epic, I, I reflected on that and, and, and you have really truly lived out these words during your service uh, on the board and I feel honored to have worked with you. I appreciate all of the support that you've provided for the community, for our district staff, for our leadership team, and to me as superintendent. And I and we are really going to miss having you on the board. So thank you for your service. <laughs> and in just a moment, I'll present you both with uh, a, a um, small token of our gratitude. But um, Mr. Mabry. So Mr. Mabry was first elected in 2011 and has served 12 years on the KSD <laughs> school board. <clears throat> you, Mr. Mabry, you served as the board's vice president, and he, not only that, he's the current president of WASDA, as we all know, which is the State School Directors Association. Uh, Mr. Mabry is not only an active member of the KSD community, but an active advocate for students and public education statewide. In his board bio, he states the following. It's short and sweet, and uh, I'll follow up it with a couple of words after this. He says, as a member of the Kennewick School Board, I will personally reach out to parents and educators to make KSD the very best it can be for all our children. And as I reflected on that statement of, of yours, Mr. Mabry, you have truly lived these words throughout your tenure as a board member. Over the course of the past 11 years, prior to me getting here and, and ever since, you have worked to build relationships, um, real positive personal relationships with parents, with staff members, and with students. And you've worked tirelessly to help make KSD the very best it can be. You ask the right questions, you raise the right issues, and you understand your role as a board member. And I remember interviewing with the board uh, when I came to the district uh, for my position, and I remember being so encouraged and impressed with your perspectives and insights. Sorry. <laughs> and I knew that with board members like you, KSD was the right district for me. So, Mr. Mabry, it's been an honor to work with you, and I and we are going to miss your leadership on the board. So, apologies, but um, I'm speaking not only from uh, my heart, but I know the heart of our team here as well. So we've got uh, some plaques for each of you, a plaque for each of you. So um, you can always remember serving <laughs> here in KSD and hopefully it will find a, a place, a special place on your wall. So we wanna present these to you and give you both a big, big round of applause.
And now I suppose I carry on with the meeting. Right? <laughs> okay. No. The Kennewick School District Board of Directors appreciate hearing from the community. At regular board business meetings, the Board of Directors provide an opportunity for communications from parents, staff, and district residents. This time is reserved during the working meeting for the board to listen to comments, inputs, and information. The board did not respond to comments provided as the goal is to listen and to learn. Please know that the board's silence is neutral. It is neither a sign of agreement or disagreement with the speaker's remarks. As appropriate, the board would ask the superintendent and her staff to look into any raised issue. Please note that it's important that all community members feel welcome and safe during the board business meeting. The board does not take public comments on issues related to personnel or individually named staff members at board meetings. However, you can email the board with such comments. Finally, please remember that your words have impact and you, not the school district, are responsible for your words. We caution all speakers that it is possible that your statement could violate the rights of others under various laws, including uh, laws protecting privacy and laws prohibiting def uh, defamation. If you're unsure of the legal effect of your remarks, you should seek independent legal advice. In any case, we ask that you help us model for our students what a respectful and inclusive community looks and sounds like. Okay, you're gonna have the opportunity to come to the mic and speak. Please use the provided form, which I have with me to sign in and uh, we will recognize you. You're given two minutes to address the board. You'll see a stoplight uh, projected on the screen and it will let you know when your time is about to end and when it does end. If there are multiple people speaking on the same topic, please focus your comments on aspects of the topic that has not been covered yet. Thank you for taking your time to be here tonight. All right. We're going to start with Tamara Parker, and I would tell you, I, there's a slight chance that I might mess up your name. And it, oh, thank you. <laughs> Good. Well, I'm trying my best. If I do, it's not out of disrespect. Yeah. Right here. Sure, you need to. Yeah. Make yourself comfortable. Okay. <laughs> but do it within two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Thank you. Okay, um, so my name's Tamara Parker and my husband signed in as well and I understand that I could take his two minutes so I plan on, it'll be a little under four minutes. Um, I'm pretty active in the school district. I volunteered a lot. I even volunteered daily to help a little boy in my daughter's first grade class learn how to read. I'm also a substitute teacher and the beginning part of what I wanna say is really just a thank you. I have three kids. My oldest, Genevieve, graduated this past June as valedictorian from Kamaikan High School. She was given the math award at graduation. She was in the COG program, math club since fifth grade and had advanced math classes all three years in middle school and all through high school. And she's now double majoring in applied computational mathematics and bioinformatics with, um, and is pre-med. And I wanna thank you for getting her all the advanced math opportunities and setting her up for success. Her math classes in college are much harder, but she's capable of doing hard things since she had the opportunity throughout her education with KSD to do hard things. And I wanna thank you. My second child, Lila, is a junior at Kamaikan High School. She just found out just this Monday that she is in the running to become a National Merit Scholar finalist. A perfect score in the PSAT is 1520 and she got a 1510 with a perfect math score. She was in all three years of COG she did advanced math classes two years ahead of her grade and in middle school, um, the district in eighth grade bused her to Kamaikan to get her the math she, she needed. She has since only been having advanced math classes in high school and I wanna thank you for getting her to going to those great lengths and getting her the opportunity she needed to grow and develop in math. 
But unfortunately, all the things that allowed my girls to thrive are changing, specifically advanced math cl class opportunities in middle school. My third child, Cal, is in fifth grade. He's doing math two years ahead of his grade. When he goes to Desert Hills, there are not advanced classes for him because as I understand, all KSD middle schools are phasing out their advanced math classes. In my emails with the principal at Desert Hills, Casey Gant, who was very helpful, my understanding is Cal's math classes will not be advanced. And what this means is while he will be in the same books that they use in high school, it, it will only cover eight of the 12 chapters. Now that's losing a third of math curriculum for the year. Three years of doing this and that's an entire year of math missed after completing middle school. The math covered during this time is foundational. Nothing should be missed. After the amazing support and experience given to my girls, I'm trying to understand why KSD would do this. Not only are you lowering the child's trajectory in math significantly, significantly and giving them a ceiling and taking away their competitive edge, you're also taking away the school district's competitive edge. I ask that you reverse this change and that our kids are given back advanced math options at the middle school level. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is that something we can look in? I'll have your staff look into. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I will follow up. I, I don't know if I need time, but how does that work? Like, how do how does this conversation continue? Like, do I call back or? Either way, you can contact uh, the, the district. I'll let you speak to it since I might not be here. Yeah, probably the best thing um, to do would be for um, you to leave your contact information with any of the cabinet members who are back at the table here. Okay. And we will follow up with you. Okay. That sounds great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, good. And uh, next up is Linda Stevenson. Well, so first of all, Tamara could not have set me up better. <laughs> Thank you, Tamara. And also, I strongly second everything sh that she said. My son also took advantage of those exact same opportunities. Uh, okay, great KSD news. Uh, two weeks ago tonight, I was running the high school regional math is cool championships at CBC. I think I told you guys that Southridge came for the first time ever and in great news they won first place team wow. in their division which was they were in the middle division um great outcome for them and they did that with only one team of four students to put that into some perspective hanford usually shows up with about 40 to 50 students okay kamaikin was there also <coughs> uh, of course they were in the top division and in great news for them two of their students took home individual medals in the calculus division. This is huge because that is definitely the most competitive division. So congratulations to Gibson Waite, who got 12th place. And I cannot believe my luck that he is here tonight. Oh. Leon Jacob. <laughs> Ninth place in calculus. I am so proud of you and Gibson both, and I'm glad you're here. Um, so uh, great news also, both Kamaikin and Southridge are coming to our state contest next month, which is in Moses Lake. Uh, they will be in the same division then, so it will be interesting to see them go head to head. Uh, Kennewickai still ghosting me. Either they just ghost me completely or uh, they email me back and say, we're busy, maybe next year. So uh, still working on that, uh, getting the trifecta of high schools from Kennewick um, at my competition next year. I really hope Southridge enjoyed it. I think they did, who wouldn't winning first place, right? And that they will continue to grow their program. And in closing, Ron, Diane, thank you guys so much and you will be greatly missed. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. I miss you too. <laughs> next up is Lisa Papard. Peppers. It's a famous person. Sorry. No problem. Ready. Mr. Mavery and Miss Sunvik, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge and honor your staunch, fair, and well informed service to this district. I am very sad to see you go. 
Um, I came tonight to once again defend communities and schools. But as this is the day after the election, I would be remiss not to acknowledge my loss. Despite having to withdraw from the campaign in June, I can take pride in earning 40% of the votes. However, <clears throat> it bears pointing out that our voter turnout was extremely low, roughly 18% based on a possible number of 60,000 60, ballots. Please keep in mind that those who might have won the election, you might have won the election, but you don't know if that means that the majority of district residents agree with your platform. When you post about school board matters on your personal social media page and then only let your friends comment, you perpetuate the echo chamber that you live in. I hope that you will all do your due diligence to hear from people with viewpoints you might not share. And as for communities and schools, don't pretend that you're concerned about their hiring practices and the possibility of them missing out on good candidates. You talk about transparency. I think it starts with telling the truth. You've been gunning for them since they posted about Pride Month. Ambushing them when they come to the board to give their report is inappropriate. My life has changed quite a bit since I filed my candidacy. And while I know that resigning from the race was the right decision for me and my family, I still care very much about this school district and its children's children and families. <clears throat> I hope that the thousands of people who voted for me will be there to hold this board accountable and to speak up for the things they care about. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Allison Dabbler. Hi, I'm Allison. I am now just a community member as my youngest graduated just this past year. Um, I'm proud to serve on the Instructional Materials um, Committee as well. Um, I'm here tonight just to express my heartfelt gratitude to the directors Diane Sunbeck and Ron Mabry. Um, public service is very often a thankless job and I just wanted to let you two know that I'm very thankful to you both for your service. You have both demonstrated the very highest standards of being informed well-tempered, fair, and ethical in your behavior and your judgments. As an anti-racist and as a parent of LGBT children, I'm so grateful to you both for your commitment to the dignity, equity, and inclusion for all KSD students and their families. Your input during attempts to ban a book on race and to remove pride flags from classrooms was the representation that I needed to reflect my values on this board. So thank you so much. I just want to end that we just heard from uh, a young lady, an exchange student, um, and her comments about how welcoming and kind she's found people to be in this community. And I hope that the new board can continue to um, show her that this community is in fact welcoming and kind to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Oh boy, you guys are making it tough to get through this. Yeah, what other tissues? Uh, I took the tissue. I don't need tissues. Good question. Do we have anyone online tonight? No. Okay, we're gonna go on to item four. No, we just did item four. Uh, we're gonna address the consent items. Do we have a, a motion to accept the consent items as presented? I'll move to approve consent items as written. We have a second? I'll second that. All right. Uh, discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, we ask for the roll call vote. Mr. Galbraith? Yes. Mr. Valentine? Yes. Ms. Sunbit? Yes. And Mr. Mabry? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Uh, we're going to be entertained tonight with human resources report, personnel actions, mm -hmm. uh, which are part of the consent. <laughs> <and you're, laughs> 
Boy, this little bird just keep giving me a lot of good information here. That's part of the consent package. If you want to review that, you can. We can provide that. But uh, now we're going to move on to the superintendent report. Really important stuff. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mabry. So I'll just uh, keep it brief tonight. Um, uh, as we all know, last night was election night, and uh, based on election night results, I want to congratulate Mr. Connors, uh, Ms. Gledhill, and Mr. Miller. Um, of course, the um, the election is not certified officially until November 28th, um, but I'll be reaching out to our new uh, board members. Uh, to ensure that they have all the information about the WASDA conference uh, coming up and to meet with them um, prior to their um, swearing in, which will be on December 13th, uh, to just provide some preliminary board onboarding, as we've talked about as a board over the past couple of years, and work to kind of strengthen some of those onboarding processes. So we'll work on starting to get those meetings set up and uh, provide them with materials and so forth. So um, we look forward to welcoming our new board members and swearing them in on December 13th. Very good. Thank you. One of my favorite times, one of the things I'm going to miss the most is picking on the student rep. But I know she's going to do fine tonight, so here's your moment. Thank you. Uh, so today we did have a student advisory council meeting. Um, both in my meeting with Dr. Pierce today and the Student Advisory Council meeting, um, we discussed the district safety reporting system. Um, this is currently available on the school district's website. Um, today, Mrs. Pierce, uh, Dr. Pierce brought to me an older campaign, which was done around 2018, we believe, which promotes the uh, safety reporting system. And I can pass this down to you if you'd like to see it. Um, so today in the student advisory meeting, um, we spent about half of it discussing questions regarding the safety reporting system as well as the previous campaign. Um, so when students were asked who had seen the poster before, every student rose their hand. Mm -hmm. But when we asked who knew about the district's reporting system, only two students rose their hand. So this tells me and Dr. Pierce that the previous campaign just wasn't very successful in doing its job in making the students aware of the reporting system and or it's just outdated. Um, we got some really good feedback, such as how to modernize and improve the poster and how we can modify it to be helpful to students of all grades as well. Um, so my plan is just to work with Dr. Pierce and Mrs. Chastain in the future weeks to come up with a new campaign and to get it out with, with our feedback to get it out to schools. Um, and then just lastly, in our meeting, um, Dr. Pierce gave us an introduction on the financial literacy, which is something that we're going to be discussing in the fu uh, future weeks. So. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Gabe? I, um, I don't have anything to report on. I do want to um, say, though, um, to both Diane and Ron, I do service is hard. And I do appreciate your guys' commitment to, to serving. Um, and I know you guys will continue to advocate for students um, after you after you leave the board. And um, I do appreciate your guys' time and commitment to, to serving. So thank you guys very much and good luck in your in your future with that. Thanks. So I got a couple things. Um, went to some trunk or treats uh, with, some, with some schools and I want to say I just want to give a shout out to uh, principal Natalie McKay up at Sage Crest. I, th I think one of the things that she does so well is she is she gets the kids excited about about things like like my daughter goes there and and she's like every activity she has to go to because it's going to be the coolest thing dad it's going to be the coolest thing so i just i think she has a really good i almost think we should workshop that and see like what she does so well how she does that because i, I don't know what the other elementary schools are like but i just know that um that all the kids there love it and so i just i, I would like to dig into that a little bit and see kind of what she does um I'm also running like a, I'm working with a couple of different local um, uh, local groups. Uh, this thing called Operation uh, Child Christmas Box, where um, kids from around the world were putting together shoe boxes from around the world and sending them uh, shoe boxes locally, and then we're sending them around the world. 
And um, I've, 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 my goal is to give out like 100 and I'm pretty close. I think I have like 20 something left to give out to, to give to a person. They put the whole box together. So I have some left. So if anybody is interested in that, I would love for, um, to, to get that to them. So, so some, some kid around the world can have a cool Christmas that they wouldn't be able to normally have one. Um, I, I, and I wanted, I uh, wish this exchange students were still here because I wanted to say something. I'm, I met the young lady here from, from Kazakhstan earlier and we, I grew up with exchange students in my house always. So I just think that's a really cool, cool thing. Um, and lastly, yes, I wanted to, to uh, tell you two guys, thank you. Uh, it's been great serving with you, serving with you, and I know you're on to on to bigger and better and greater things. And so, and you guys know my, my number, so please stay in contact. <clears throat> Thank you, Diane. Uh, so, Wasden Networking webinar uh, last week was about artificial intelligence, and um, I know so many people are like, afraid of it, uh, and there are certainly things in Ron Cone. I know Ron's like in there taking care of stuff, but there are also benefits to AI and a lot of benefits to AI. And so they talked about how um, how we can encourage the use and the benefits of it while being very aware of how it can be used to manipulate things. And so that was very interesting. I think we're gonna have some ongoing um, discussions about that. Uh, I was at the Fuerza Reading Night and Choir Night, which was a precursor to um, Halloween, and they do it every year. And, uh, we have not had the choir before, and that was really fun. And um, Fuerza's pretty big. How many 700 kids there it's, it's, at Fuerza? Uh, six, 680, 600. Okay. <clears throat> so I, counting the rows of chairs and how many chairs, there were over 400 people in the auditorium. And we had to sit in the back in the kitchen area. And so that was very exciting to see families um, there. And of course, everybody goes to see cute kids. And then the, um, the trunk or treat is, is reading. And so everything that the kids get, there's a little piece of candy, but it's a reading activity to make reading more fun. And so that's always um, very fun to go see. And then the next day was the Mid-Columbia Partnership author slash illustrator, this gentleman does all of it, um, assembly that I got to go to and earlier in the day. He spoke with um, different groups of kids. And, and one of the amazing things about Mid-Columbia Partnership is that it's small groups of kids. And so you have an internationally known author illustrator and about 13 kids. And I've been to ones where we've had the whole school at, but he could like, look at Ron and talk to Ron and he'd say, what do you want to write? Or what's your cartoon? And, you know, what's your favorite animal? And then he would do these things. And he was specifically showing the kids how to do it on iPads and different um, apps that are available. And he's a wonderful man, but the fact that he could just individually talk with those students to me was an amazing thing. Um, so I know that um, Carrie will continue doing those kinds of things at school. I just wrote a Christmas tree, so I'm going to keep going even though I'm not on board anymore. So that's it. That's it. Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, <clears throat> Diane and the rest of the board, everybody in this room and people that are not in the room. Thank you for allowing me to serve you for 12 years. It's been, and you're not going to believe this, but it's been an absolute honor for everybody. And, and one of the things that you pick up over 12 years is that you do pick up some Conrads in order. And uh, one of them is Connie Fowl uh, with the uh, Highlands Middle School. She's never failed to invite me to come to the veterans uh, events. And sometimes I go and sometimes I can't lie to her. She's so honest, I forget. <laughs> so this year she sent me like three to five notices saying, it's going to happen, Ron. It's going to happen, Ron. And I went, and it was amazing. It was amazing what they do with the vets. If, if you get to go, uh, go, because they make you feel like you're walking on cloud now, and they really do show appreciation. And I would never miss it again, unless uh, my health or something fell. The way they treated me was just us, not me. The veterans was amazing. And I just wanted to give her that shout out for that in Highlands Middle School because the students were amazing also. Because they, I got to tell you, I, I'm a just, I can do what I want to tonight. So I'm going to tell you, <laughs> they, they line the hallway and they have the veterans walk from the library to the gymnasium. And it's like a walk of honor 
they are clapping as you walk through. If you, you want to get a natural high, <laughs> take that journey and, and have those kids clapping for you and reaching out and wanting to shake hands. It's amazing. And we'll see because uh, if there's competition, because tomorrow, <clears throat> Kenan Wakai is having a memorial event. And I will be going to that also. If you get a chance to go as a fellow vet, uh, you might want to carve out a little time to go to Kenan Wakai tomorrow. Uh, yeah, in closing, thank you so much for everything. Sure. I didn't know we were doing that now. So I want to, um, four years went super fast. And so there were some interesting hiccups along the way. Um, but one of the things that you see when you sit on this side of the table um, after 41 years of teaching is, you know, there are lots of people that care, but we all care in different ways. And so um, I would put a plug in that you should also do your time sitting on this side because over the last five years I took to 150 people to ask them to run for school board and only one have. And so I think that you don't have to have any special superhero talents to do it, you just have to care. So thank you for allowing me to do it. I've enjoyed it and I'll be like Dr. Pierce. <laughs> um, but it's been great. And yet it's time to do other things too. So it doesn't have to be forever like Ron did. <laughs> so if you can only do four years, sign up for four years. Yeah, that's true. Okay, enough of that soapy stuff there. Let's go to item seven, reports and discussions. Communities and school, Dr. Pierce. Okay, well, um, when um, communities and schools uh, team was here at the last meeting to do the annual update, there were a number of um, questions that some board members um, had. And so uh, we uh, invited uh, Lupe Mares, who's the executive director of Communities and Schools to be here this evening uh, to um, answer those questions and provide any information that the, the board was looking for. So um, I'll introduce Lupe, come on up. Thank you Lupe for being here. Uh, we really value the partnership with Communities and Schools. Um, as you know, it's a longstanding partnership and um, we recognize communities and schools as our partner of the year uh, this past year and so um, it's great that you're here we appreciate it and um, also thank you to board members who um, sent questions in advance so i could get those to lupe so she could um, you know be ready to answer questions that you might have so with that um, i'm just going to turn it over to you lupe okay all right thank you thank you for having me <clears throat> All right, so I'm just going to, like uh, Tracy said, I have the questions um, that you had asked. So I'm just going to go down my list and, and respond. So if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to, to ask after I'm done speaking. All right, so one of the things that you had asked about, some of the board members had asked about, was how do we identify um, students who need to be case managed? So I'm going to just reiterate some of the information that was already given at the last board meeting. Um, as Katie presented, you know, we get referrals from all, all folks within the school. We get a lot of uh, referrals from school staff, whether it's a teacher, principal, um, and a counselor, really anybody. We also get referrals from parents themselves for their students. Also, we get self-referrals. Um, so again, those referrals can come from anywhere. And then also in regards to when a student may need case management support. So if we see that a student is needing more frequent support, then that's when we, whoever's making the referral, if it's not the parent, will say, okay, let's reach out to a parent to see if that is a need that really is of interest to them. And then at that point, we seek out parent consent so that everybody is in alignment um, and that they get the support that they need. Um, the other question that you had was how often and what do the meetings look like? So as Kitty mentioned last time in her presentation, every student is different and all of the needs are different. And even within the same student, they can have different needs throughout the year. So that can vary. Um, it, again, it's really case by case and it's really student to student, family to family on what that could be. Um, the next question you had was how do you determine the success of the individual who's case managed? So we track data around attendance, grades, or behavior to monitor progress, and we reference Power School to do so, um, just like school staff do. We also provide mid-year and end-of-year reports to the superintendent, our liaison, and school principals, so they're aware, and obviously they have access to Power School, so they can always go in and check um, how students are, are doing. 
Last question is how involved are the students, teachers and school administration in that process? So again, I'm going to reiterate what the principal Megan said from Sunset View um, the last time she was here. So she stated she's uh, Katie's an integral member of our team and every morning our team meets together, my administration team as well as our counselor and our CIS student support coordinator. We talk about what our student needs are at Sunset View and we communicate constantly to make sure that those needs are met not only with attendance, but with needs she facilitates in our community. It makes our school a stronger place. So if you come to Sunset View, not only will you see Katie doing that great work and not only facilitating the partnership with our families, but the partnership with you know me and our staff. It makes Sunset View a better place and coming into, into it as a new principal, the support that not only Katie, but that Amy provided me last year allowed me to do my work better so that I can support our families in every way to ensure that every student at Sunset View feels safe, known, and valued. So moving on to the next set of questions. Yep. Can, can I just ask two quick, the, the meetings, um, are those, when are, are they students like pull out of class just like they would be for like a, additional reading groups or is this like a lunch or before school? Like when, it, like. So we try not to pull students out of class. Okay. Uh, we try to do when they have their regularly scheduled breaks. If there is a situation that happens, it's usually clear through the teacher or counselor or somebody who feels the need to pull the student out of class, but it's not just us. It's not us pulling students out of class. OK, and then that, um, what you just reiterated from Megan, so that's that's how all schools are involved. Like every school has the same thing. They're all they meet mornings discuss. That's kind of the whole process. So that's what we prefer and hope that the okay. process is you can reach out to the school staff and, and ask what their own what each building's process is but okay. like I said everything is building to building okay yeah Tracy. yeah I, I think um, that's specifically what they do at Sunset View yeah. I don't know that every school has that same kind of morning huddle up but definitely has um, regular meetings whether it's their student assistance team um, where the communities and schools person is is part of that team and and that discussion that's happening about what do students need what are we seeing so far right. so it's going to look a little bit different in every school and Luke, are you do you have like series of questions you're going to kind of block them together so probably if i have questions about that i should ask right now right yes okay and by the way um i mean when tracy when you read diane's thing that she she said we want to be well have well thought out decisions and and lisa and allison both mentioned being informed i think that's what we're trying to do as we're trying to ask those questions mm -hmm. to be informed, right? Um, so when you mentioned self-referral, what is, is that, tell, can you unpack that a little bit? Yeah, from the, the parent or the student? I, I mean, that was your word. You said yep. you said sometimes yeah, so the sometimes, case manager self-referral. Yes, yeah, so let's say that a parent, <clears throat> they, I mean, they know their, their child, right? Their student, and so they, if they know that their student is struggling in school, then they'll reach out to usually the school's support team to say like, hey, my child is, is really struggling. What kind of supports can I get? And then that's where the school leadership team comes into play, which includes communities and schools. And they really make a plan around what type of supports they can offer that student and that family. OK, so self-referral is a parent referral. A parent know, need, knows their kid needs help yep. and they reach out to school and say what's available. Yep, a student can do the same thing. So if they know like, oh, man, I'm really struggling here, like, I don't know, staying awake or paying attention to math or I don't understand math or whatever the thing is that they can also say, where can I get support? And again, same process where then the school leadership team comes into play and they really work together on who can support and in what ways. And then there's outreach made to the parent. OK, and you mentioned uh, parent consent. You said happens 100 percent of the time. Correct. And then so how For does case how, management, yes. what's that? For case management, yes. Is there other something other than case management? So yeah, so we have we provide school wide services. So like if a student needs a jacket, then they can come and get a jacket. OK, good, good. Um, and then so and how does that parent consent happen usually? What's the process? It's a written written document where we require their signature and their acknowledgement that they know that we are going to be meeting with their student to address whatever issues that they brought up. OK, and then I, I assume we all, the school district has access to those documents, right? That, that gets cleared through the school district. It gets approved through the school district. Yeah, but we have the we form. have some record of that, I assume, the school district. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just thinking about where, you know, there those records are housed at the at the school. Um, so I don't know okay? that we have um, 
collect them here, you know, well, centrally I mean, or anything, school, but yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, so the, the the signed ones are kept at the school. Um, I was talking more about the template. Okay, yeah, yeah. but the but after they, yeah, the template is generic yes. and then they, the parent signs and then that's, that signature is kept at the school, yeah. great. And then and then just about the success metrics, like how, like how, what percentage of kids are, are completing or, or, you know, finishing, you know, it, you know what I mean? No, 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 I'm asking like you like you, you said how we help kids is a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. But my question is like how many kids are at the end of it? What's the what's the percentage or a, me a metric that that shows that these kids are being helped? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, you're familiar with our website, and on on our website you can see what our affiliate wide outcomes are. But also too, I can follow up and give you Kennewick School District data on on what those outcomes are. I think that'd be I think I think yeah. I would really appreciate that to know like how many kids are actually <coughs> completing whatever goal and then and your goal what, what would you say your goal is like how do you know when they've accomplished the thing you know like how do you know right well the same way that a teacher would track right like are they actually making progress or not if it's a, an academic goal are they you know are they going from a D to a C from a C to a B etc cetera, etc cetera. If it's attendance, you know, are they coming more days than they were before? Like it, that we track it in the same way that school staff um, okay. track that. Okay, yeah, I would like to, I would love you free to follow up on that. Of course. Yeah. All right, uh, moving on. So the other question was in regards to, your question was, did you receive funding from Benton County or the city of Kennewick for the CIS program? If not, can you explain why or share why? Uh, we do not. However, we are a nonprofit, so we're always seeking out um, funding opportunities that will support our work. Have you never you you never received uh, funding from uh, Benton County? We have before, correct? Yeah. Yeah, and then and then what what happened with that? Just... We did not get approved for funding, but we had, did not receive a written confirmation as to why that was. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on. So your next question was around um, the contract amount with the school district uh, for the 11th schools. So, you know, you stated based on the hourly rate and the 215 days per contract, um, which comes out to 475,000 per year, where, where is the additional money <clears throat> spent? So for last fiscal year, which was August through, through the end of June, roughly 493,000 of that was in salaries alone. And then 640 of that included uh, taxes and benefits, which we know is required to, for, an, for each employee. Um, and then, I don't know if, if you all knew this, but the average civilian worker costs an employer about $42.48. So 31% of that is in benefits and 69% is in wages. So we're in alignment with, with those rates there. Um, I know uh, Gabe stated, you know, having familiarity with hiring and, and um, job descriptions. Um, so as you know, like we try to hire highly qualified staff and in order to do that, we need to have competitive wages and competitive benefit packages. We also are bound by Washington state law. So there's certain leaves that we have to offer, um, which again goes into that. Um, and then also in order to contract with the Kenwick school district, we are required to have liability insurance. So that's an additional cost that we have to pay for on our end in regard as well as other organizational infrastructure, which communities and schools pays for, um, which is just the cost of doing business, um, just like any other nonprofit um, has to do. And we cover that by seeking out private grants, donations, uh, fundraising, things like that. And then regarding the, um, the remainder of the $1,818, uh, we use that to seek out in-kind support, outreach, data supervision, printed materials, um, other program supplies that go back into the school. So that's that part. Uh, also, uh, next, you um, stated that uh, in regards to our job description, where we talk about our commitment to social justice. So I'm, I'm glad that you pointed out because we noticed that we had a uh, punctuation error on our website. Mm -hmm. um, so because you, you asked, like, what is social justice? So we actually had um, on our website a comma instead of a colon. Uh, but it's what our definition of what social justice is, is defined it, there. Um, so it's commitment to social justice, colon, promoting diversity and inclusion for all students and families, regardless of race, color, national origin, gender, sexual orientation, religion, or disability. So that's, that's what we refer to when we say social justice. 
in schools. And obviously we're also referring to educational equity. We also want to make sure that there isn't any discrimination happening with any of the protected classes listed by OSBI and Washington state law, which is in alignment with your non-discrimination policy. And also in alignment with uh, the this board of directors commitment to equity statement. Any other questions on that? And if you're not familiar with your commitment to equity statement, I'd love to read it to you. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I'm familiar with it. Yeah, I agree with it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Oh, oh, sorry, just real quick. I, I, I appreciate you getting up and answering the questions. Um, that the hiring piece that you were just discuss, discussing, um, that kind of comes from the curiosity as to why that is only in your coordinator position and not your other positions within your organization. So it just seemed kind of interesting that that was for the positions that were in the school, but the rest of your organization positions don't have that same requirement. They, so they just, do. They okay. do have the same requirement. I, I would check your, your posting right now because it's not in there. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll update it if it's not, but it, we require that from all of our staff. Okay, that's, yeah. that's where it yeah. came from. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you as always. Yes, thank you. I'm going to miss seeing you every year else. So. <laughs> Same. So. She probably, you could go volunteer. I will. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we would love that. Always looking for volunteers. Thank there you. Again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. And I will um, follow up with Lupe and get the data, <coughs> the yes. outcome data, and, and get that to board. Very good. Since Dr. Pierce liked that microphone so much, <laughs> I'm going to have her go back up there about oh. legislative priorities. We uh, talked a little bit at the last board meeting about this being a legislative season. season. Legislative session is about to begin, and so it's the time of year where the board reviews and uh, potentially updates uh, legislative priorities. So we have those available to share with legislators when we meet with them. So just a little bit about the upcoming session. Uh, begins on Monday, January 8th. It's a 60-day supplemental session. This year, it's a supplemental budget year, which means there will likely be smaller budget related changes. Uh, another just piece of information, of course, 2024 is a election year, general election. And based on the information that we've received, the state revenues continue to exceed projections. So from a budget perspective, you know, the state um, is, is in good shape. Uh, every year, uh, for the past several years, uh, the board has developed a legislative priorities document that um, focuses, it's focused for the last several years on the big areas of adequate and equitable K-12 funding, on access and opportunity for students and educators, and on safe and sufficient school facilities. So you've got a copy of um, the 2023 legislative priorities document in in front of you. Um, also, uh, it was helpful this year because sometimes the WASDA legislative priorities document doesn't come out until after uh, the WASDA conference, but this year it came out prior. So there's a copy of the WASDA uh, document in front of you too. Um, one thing we know um, is it's helpful for legislators to hear the, you know, th there might be differences, of course, between districts and that kind of thing, but um, they really listen <laughs> when it's kind of collective bodies saying the same thing. So that's why it's helpful for not only individual districts to have legislative priorities document, but for the WASDA document to exist, which focuses like the KSD document 
on amp ample, equitable, and stable public education funding, um, including special education, also building safe and healthy schools, and transporting and feeding students. So it's kind of um, worded a little differently, but a lot of the same priorities that our board has identified. And then WASA, which is the Washington Association of School Administrators, right? Um, they also develop a legislative platform every year. And again, you're going to see similarities there, fully funding special education, fixing pupil transportation, things that we were working on last year and have made some you know, strides forward in. Um, but it's helpful to see all the connections between the agencies and, and the, um, you know, the themes that are emerging. So um, tonight is the opportunity for the board to discuss any um, changes or updates you would like to make to your legislative priorities document for 2024. So it's just kind of an open ended discussion. What we talked about at the last meeting is like to, you know, make the changes tonight as we're discussing them and then have the board uh, vote and adopt the updated document because we've got the meetings with legislators uh, coming up right after um, WASDA. And then I'll, um, after we have that discussion and hopefully the board approves an updated document, I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes talking about the legislative page program um, because this is the time of year where now that is open. So just a little preview of that. But backing up, um, it's really just the opportunity for the board to discuss and I'll take notes. And um, you know if there's any formatting changes or things that need to be made, I can do that. But you really want to hopefully uh, update the contents of the priorities document this evening. Okay, so this open mic type of uh, <laughs> yeah. just speak up as you feel. Open mic board discussion. Okay. I, you guys are being a little shy, so I'm gonna start. Oh, I was just reading. Oh, you already yeah. know? Or you, are you no, ready? no, I was just reading through some of it. Okay. Yeah, Ron, take uh, it away. Well, one of the things I want to say is uh, where we have safe and sufficient schools. That's ours, and I think that's sort of cap captured on the WASDA level on the build safe and healthy schools. Is that equity within our schools? Uh, what happens on the west side should happen on the east side, should happen northeast, whatever. And one of my farewell drives through the community looking at the schools where we should be darn proud of our schools, but at the same time, we should strive to make them all. Uh, the same. If you go to one middle school, they should have the same uh, privileges as the next middle school. Or uh, one high school shouldn't have anything uh, greatly out of the way different than another high school. Those students deserve to have the same type of advantages and, and uh, resources. So I ask, you know, when you're doing things, you're talking about building new schools or talking about making changes to schools, uh, make it equitable. Yes, Dan. So last year, um, the legislature, if you're uh, at the top one, adequate and equitable, um, top right, fully fund special education and fix the um, stars. Um, the legislators really balked on doing anything for a long time, and then they said, well, they really wanted to get more information. And they've been asking for more information for about the last five years, as far as I can remember, and special education even more so. And so I'm going to ask Dr. Pierce, has April gotten any information from them to ask for very specific things? What we did receive is um, an ask from WASDA for in preparation for um, mm -hmm. next week for us to put in how much transportation funding we receive how much we expend and what the difference is. So I filled that out well, um, we've done that every and year. put it into to the, you know, right. WASDA's yeah. platform. And they had all of that last mm -hmm. year and there was supposed to be this very big survey and I've been looking and there hasn't been any. So I don't, I hope that there will be, but that might be something that when you speak to the legislators okay. that you um, ask specifically about because it would be nice for Ms. Lizer to have a little information to get going mm -hmm. um, okay. and then um, the, the same thing was about the early learning and the um, accelerated and CTE programs. They wanted more information. That was supposed to come out last when I would have been 
early fall they were supposed to ask districts for that and there's there's been nothing through the legislature that i have been able to find out so um you know it's like how many students do we have in, in that prototypical how much are we not getting money for how much is the district spending funding on so i think all of these are how much are we spending money on how many students do we have involved and what are we not being uh compensated for because those should all be basic ed but they're not mm -hmm. um, and then i was going to say to mallory um first of all individual district stories are always important to our legislators but student story student voice is very important to our legislators and so um i don't know if mallory's going to have the opportunity to maybe be there when we talk with our legislators when they that would be a great thing and don't be afraid because they're really nice people but they really want to hear student voice and um as is appropriate and so i would really encourage you to tell them everything you know um with this document uh, the last bullet on adequate and equitable funding uh enhanced student learning are we is that is that also a transitional kindergarten would, would that fit into that kind of yeah into the early section. into the early learning mm -hmm. okay so, mm -hmm. right. yeah that's good i just asked because i know in was it calls out transitional kindergarten mm -hmm. in their blocks so i just mm -hmm. noticed that what we did well and because that got changed last year remember to that transition new, to kindergarten right, and then that new thing is kind of taking over this yeah. following year so mm -hmm. i don't know exactly how that's going to work okay. but but we could change that wording to like transition to kindergarten yeah. that you know just to be specific instead of kindergarten preparedness yeah I, whatever the i guess updated okay terminology is and then um the only other thing, at least from the like the WASDA sheet we got, um, under their safe and healthy schools, they have a section about engaging parents and students in the decision making. So I'm not sure where we want to call that out in this document, um, if, if that's the right place for it. Um, but it would be nice to have something in there about student and parent decision making. And I think we have double bullet points in the middle one, advanced policies to close opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, we do. So, okay. So, yeah. Um, if we added a bullet about the, you know, similar to the WASDA wording, um, do you think it goes in the middle section or? It may even be another the, section. WASDA kind of calls it out in the, in the top of theirs too. So it may just be up there in that paragraph where it says we applaud uh, the legislators mm -hmm. paramount. Okay. Maybe a sentence in there about we're committed to student and, and parent in both for decision making and stuff too. So maybe it's not a bullet point, but in that okay. slide. I have, one, I have one brief comment. So I just would like to encourage the, the two members who go, which I think we know who they are, um, to to just ask about more local control and less bound money. You know, it's like of this huge money that we get, we have very little that we can actually do anything with, right? And most of it's tied to something. So just I'd just like to have them, you know, flesh out that process a little bit. Like, can that is that something we can push on? Like, hey, can we have more, can we, you know, they we talk they talk about regional things and being able to adjust for region uh, regionality but then they give us no money to do that with right and they all the money is like tied to something and so you know like i just want to emphasize that we know our region so let us govern our region and you and seattle can govern its region spokane can govern its region but so more 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 free up freed up money would be the thing i'd like to stress um what, do you think uh like a adding a bullet yeah i point? would like to personally yeah and maybe in that first in the adequate and ed equitable funding I, yes i think that's where it goes yeah would, okay okay so there, there has <laughs> i'm sorry there's been bills to do jo just what you said and they've been uh addressed out on the uh, Senate floor, the legislative floor, but it's not a bad idea. I'm not shooting it down. I'm just saying, and, and I think uh, we got to push harder on it. Then. 
but it push on your legislators. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And that's, that's what yeah. we're talking about, right? Like, right. as we, when we go to speak with our legislators, sit down with them. Diane? So I know that every year they will, you know, re-elect people to their different committee, but um, last year, Representative Ruby uh, Waller right. and part of our area was the co-chair, uh, the minority co-chair of the Health Education Committee. I would think that he probably would continue to do that. And he has been very open and uh, accessible via email um, and phone calls at times about our education pieces. So I think the family was talking about the, the math kind of things. You know, sometimes that comes down to money for staff and, and programming. And so uh, <coughs> families, parents, students can always um, connect with our representatives at any time. Um, and, and they want that. But I think for us specifically, um, knowing that Representative Rood is high up in that education committee, it behooves us to always have very close ties with him. And, and he's a good guy, I mean, he'll listen. Right. Anything else? Okay. Okay. So I just want to recap. I think what I've heard so far, um, we would add uh, wording, essentially the same kind of wording as the wording on the WASDA document to this top area to um, state that we're committed, or the wording about committed to parent input and involvement, or I, I don't have that document in front of me, but. Um, we would add that to this sentence. Um, the other comment I heard is just having really concrete data, um, not so much changing what this says, but making sure that we've got the data, the KSD specific data to share with legislators around like the gap in transportation funding or the gap in special education funding. And so we will definitely do that. Um, changing the wording kindergarten preparedness to transition to kindergarten. Let me make a comment about that. So would um, Ready for Kindergarten be under Kindergarten Preparedness? If so, could we actually keep Kindergarten Preparedness and add GTA? That's, I'm just wondering because funding, that, you know, we spend funding for Ready, which comes from our state oh, funding, correct? Um, you mean through the Reading Foundation? Right. I mean, we use district funds for that. Mm -hmm. But we use some trying to look at my team. That's, that's why if I that's asking. yeah, I mean, I feel like that. I just don't want to get rid of kind of more like not maybe the basic ed. Okay. Um, because I was just afraid that if we just say TTK, that we're then excluding any other things that we might be doing. Mm -hmm. We could just add okay, it. Why don't we just add it? What, okay. Whatever the right wording is. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure we don't exclude anything okay. that we're not thinking. That about sounds right good. Now. Mm -hmm. I, I can just that's that's an easy fix. I'll just add the wording. Um, then removing the duplicate uh, <laughs> bullet point in the middle section. That's an easy one. And then um, based on Mr. Mabry's subject sub suggestion, I'm thinking this could be reworded to say safe, sufficient, and equitable school facilities. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Did I capture everything? Okay. Is that, does that add in what you were talking about? Like we don't need we don't need a, another bullet point in that section, Ron. Just I that verbiage works. Okay. I think so. Okay. The, the local control bullet point. Did you say that? Oh, I yeah. I I don't know if I did, but I did write it down. Um, adding a. Uh, a bullet point about local control, the like the ability to use the funding yeah. based on like you the know word, the word I use was local less needs about, less bound money, but Determine, I don't know. Yeah. That you can use whatever. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I guess the question is, are you guys comfortable <laughs> um, updating the doc? You know, approving the update of the document, knowing that I need to go back and just do the little tweaking. But I think I've got it clear. And the changes are pretty minor. It's not like a huge overhaul. So, so do we need to make a motion that we approve? Yes. It as yeah, that would be helpful. And then, so but you're approving it based on the edits that were just okay. discussed and on the record. And so, I would move to approve the KSD 2024 legislative priorities um, as, you want to say, as amended. 
on our current sheet for first and second reading. Second. All right, so we have a motion and second uh, discussion. For the discussion. Seeing none, hearing none. I call for the roll call vote. Mr. Galbraith? Yes. Mr. Valentine? Yes. Ms. Sunbit? Yes. And Mr. Mabry? Yes. Thank you. Can I just make sure that we uh, switch Mallory's name down to the bottom? Because that's yeah, I think so we'll all need to get updated. Changed. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make those updates too, for sure. Mallory's name is on here? No, it says London, but this, this is last year. <laughs> All right, Mallory, good job. Mm -hmm. you put that on your resume. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Big time, Mallory. Big time. Okay, great. So now I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes uh, highlighting again the legislative page program. We highlighted it uh, in the spring of last year, but now it's timely because the actual applications are open. So just real quickly, the legislature in our state has a page program, which they say is one of the finest in the country, and it provides students with the opportunity to really learn about the legislative process and observe the legislature um, and state government in action. Uh, pages are sponsored by legislators and they serve for a week during session. Session runs um, January to March because it's an even, it will be an even numbered year. And so um, these are students who spend their week really learning, um, doing tasks, and um, it's a great opportunity for students. So the uh, requirements to participate, student has to have parent or guardian permission, receive a recommendation from a teacher and their principal and be at least 14, but uh, not have not yet reached their 17th birthday. Um, they earn a stipend of $50 per day, also earn community service hours. And um, there's a great quote here from a student who participated, not one of our students, but it was from the legislative page um, website. Um, it, it does require that parents get them to Olympia and um, figure out where the student's gonna stay <laughs> during the week. So um, that's kind of an important part of the program. There's some scholarships available, information on the website, which I'm gonna show you, you in just a moment. Um, it's on the uh, legislature um, website. So uh, last year when we looked at this, it had said, you know, page applications are closed because it was after, but uh, now they're open. They just opened on November 1st. And so there's a, a link here. Um, if people are interested, students are interested and, um, you know, uh, Mallory, this might be something that maybe you could help us yes. get the word out about yeah. <laughs> somehow. And I could get you this information and we can figure that out, but it, um, applications are open. And I just want to add that they were begging for students last year. Mm -hmm. they, it was not completely full. And the contacts there to help with the housing is uh, once you get in and you get a liaison that would tell you where to house and even the scholarship is uh, giving you some information on how to get the scholarship. And, and uh, when we were there, these kids were making connections all over the place. They were meeting people that even we couldn't get in touch <laughs> with. So, uh, boy, I, growing up, I was, this was one of the things that I was told, oh no, you're not in the class that gets to be a page. That's, that's just, that was back then. And, and so I don't want a kid to think that they can't, you know, not in the class to become a page. Anyone can become a page. Any student, and it says you have to be recommended by the teacher or a principal. You don't have to wait for the teacher or principal to come to you. You can go to the principal and the teacher and say, I want to be in this program. So I, I would love for that word to get out also. Diane, sorry. Could, is it possible? Uh, more work for Robin, sorry. <laughs> Robin says it. No, she's not going to do more. No, she, she's saying no, it's okay. Is it possible that we can put this on our front page so that um, that's just one more way for students? I don't know how often that they look at it, but for parents and and maybe we can send something out to the principals and it can go out every evening. And then I'm going to second what Ron said about um, it not just being for the government kids. Um, I have some friends whose kids on the west side have gone and um, they are like the opposite of what you would think a page person is. And that one young person's 
story about I didn't even know what it was and I didn't think and now I'm going to be. I have a friend whose son has done all this and he is like the least likely person to ever be in government. And now he is like, uh, he, I don't even know what his scores were on all his tests, but he's going to Harvard for free because he started this. And that was not ever anything that ever interested him before. So it just shows that every kid has that interesting spark mm -hmm. and maybe you don't ever want to do it again and you go oh my gosh those people you know like are crazy or maybe you go that is exactly what i want to do right and so if you look at all the people that come from the state of washington that are um have moved up into the big ranks not necessarily legislative a huge number of those people have done the page program so i think that speaks highly for what our students can get out of it. maybe we can get it to the the daily announcements at the high schools yeah, a couple a couple yeah. times next week or two yeah and get it out in the community i know i don't know how we would get it out in the community but if we can get it posted in some areas and with kids the local gyms or whatever yep. 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 Mm -hmm. work on getting the word out thank you okay thanks thank you. all right now if we could take the mic away away from Tracy and let someone else speak, we'll go on to unfinished business. And there is none. Therefore, we'll go to new business and we'll talk about some policies. Starting with policy 2166, highly capable program. Elisa. Yeah. Um, at our last board meeting, I talked a little bit about highly capable programs and some of the work that's going on. Um, and one of those is updating our policy to reflect those universal screeners that are now required. Um, so this is our highly capable um, programs policy that talks about how students are identified and we've just updated it to have the universal screeners in the policy. That's it? That's it. Okay. All right. well, Are there I'm, any questions? Yeah, I'm used to you being a little bit longer. <laughs> That's good. That's okay. Uh, I don't have any questions. We, we, spent, we, went, we went over this yes, last we time. We did. It's, we it's did. pretty. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to uh, move to approve the update on uh, policy 2166, highly capable programs for first and second week. Second that. Hey, guys, I'm in charge here. I got my answer there. <laughs> Take noise. So you don't want to take with the mic, Ron. Go ahead, ask. Go for it. Ask for it. Okay I want that now. scratch for the record, please. Go My ahead, feelings are hurt on. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? I think that was last week. Seeing none, hearing none, we we'll call for the roll call vote. Mr. Galbraith? Yes. Mr. Valentine? Yes. Ms. Sunday? Yes. And Mr. Mabry? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't take more time. I know. <laughs> Next time, do better, miss please. You. See ya. Okay, we're going to move on to policy uh, 3131, out of district students, trans transfers. Okay. Uh, so last board meeting, I was here to talk about these very policies. So we're setting a record for um, updating policies in the quickest manner we can. Um, as we as we were look, working then with the completed policies to establish our um, procedures around them, there were a couple things that came up that we, that that again, we're kind of clarified. So in this one, this is our out of district transfer request. And if you remember, um, we talked about how families will put that request in through an online portal through the OSPI and that everything's handled through there. As such, the, the appeal process doesn't go through the district, it goes through OSPI. So in the policy, as we presented it last time around, it talked about the district superintendent or his designee having appeal authority and that really doesn't exist. Um, so we needed to make that quick little change with policy 3131. All right. Uh, entertain a motion. Um, I'll move to approve policy 3131 out of district non resident or choice student transfers as written, first and second reading. Yes. I'll second. Yeah, a motion and a second. Discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, we'll move on to a roll call vote. Mr. Galbraith? Yes. Mr. Valentine? Yes. Ms. Sunvik? Yes. And Mr. Mabry? Thank you. Thank yes. 
So next up is policy 3132. And again, similar situation here and looking as we uh, were looking, working on the procedures around appeal. Um, so one of the things that we, as we were looking at the procedures and discussing it, really it's the principal's decision to accept or deny a transfer. So um, we really feel probably the reason for that denial should be coming from principals and not from the superintendent or designee. So that was the first change. And then the second one, there is really no um, statutory authority that, that is required um, for review of these decisions. And so typically we reserve any language about board review based on something that we're required to do statutorily. So we would remove um, board review and it really is a decision of an appeal decision of the superintendent or designee um, that would happen with this so that you wouldn't be hearing any appeals about transition or transfer requests. Okay. Uh, just, just real quick, I also see a note. We changed it from February 1st to February 15th. Is that correct? The date? Yes, thank you for back. catching that. Yes, we, um, we accept transfers up until January 31st. We think we probably need more than a day to, to figure out what to do with those. <laughs> so we bumped the dates a little the bit there. Quick, so <laughs> we, yes. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, you want to turn a motion? I move to approve policy 3132 and district transfer is attended. Attendant boundaries of updated board first and second reading. Yeah, like I have a second? I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. It's open for discussion. I have a question, ma'am. Sorry. So, so with the, what you just stated, if I was a parent or a citizen, I want to make an appeal. I could not make an appeal to the to the school board directors. Who would I make my appeal to? So you'd make your appeal first to the principal who made the decision and then to the level director. So our director of secondary, our director of, of elementary, um, then really the appeal would come to me as the superintendent's designee mm -hmm. and in all likelihood uh, for the final decision. So the, the school board would be cut out of this? Yes. Okay. I just want clarification. Right. Any other discussion, questions, concerns? All right, seeing none here, none. We're opening for the roll call vote. Roll call vote. We did vote and then we had a question. Okay, so Diane and Micah. Okay, yeah. Mr. Galbraith. Yes. Mr. Valentine. Yes. Ms. Sunvik. Yes. And Mr. Mabry. Yes. Thank you. All right. And next we're going to have resolution number one. 2023 through 24 collection of admin refund levy for 2024 mr vic roberts okay uh yeah i apologize uh, got this on a little late but uh I'll give you a little bit of information uh, on this. So the county, they do a computation about this time of year, usually in October of the prior year uh, tax collections. And um, so in 2022, the levy was 18.15 million. And the county goes through and uh, they kind of calculate the exemptions and reductions and things that happen during that year, because you get your tax bill you can appeal it. There's senior exemptions. Uh, there's state land that gets uh, exempted and things like that. So then they give us an amount um, that's called an admin refund. So they're supposed to collect 18.15 million, but based on all those deductions and reductions, they didn't collect 18.15 million. They, but we, uh, the voters approved that and we are rightfully uh, can get that money. So they send us back uh, a memo that says, you know, uh, about $136,000 we did not, you know, collect from your levy uh, based on all those reductions that came in kind of after the fact. Uh, some years we don't get any. Some years uh, it's, a, it's an amount that uh, is, um, they collected too much. But, um, and, and they're trying to formalize this process, I believe. Uh, usually I would just send a memo to the county and say we want to collect it. But uh, it looks like it wants to be more formal process. We have until November 30th to uh, submit our, uh, you know, correspondence about, yes, we want to collect that levy. So they would add it on to 2024. You may see it 
in the past you may have seen an admin refund it's it, it's going to be less than a penny or something um, but that's um, you know the, the voters voted for it and we did not get all the money so uh, I put in a resolution to formalize it and it would go back to the county and they would process it for 2024 in addition to our 23 okay. million I like this. I like that. That's a good thing. But didn't we just sign for that? Didn't I? Didn't I just sign? I'm, I'm asking, do we have to make a motion or anything? Because I thought we just signed. Wasn't I, think, I think we do. Uh, yes, for a resolution, I think so. Thank you, Vic. Any, what, oh, any questions? Okay. Thank you, Vic. Keep doing it. Keep bringing in money. <laughs> yes, keep finding that money. All right. Good deal. So. Uh, Next on the list is should we, uh, should we motion and vote to approve it. Oh, we need to approve it. I, I thought we signed it. So we didn't I think we we did, but we yeah, probably signed a little early. <laughs> yeah. 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 OK, thank you. Thank you. I'll I'll make a motion to approve resolution one collection of admin refund levy for 2024. As written. First and second. First and second. All right, I have a motion and now we need a second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Sometimes I think we discuss things before now, but anyway. Uh, I agree. Seeing none, hearing none. Roll call vote. Mr. Galbraith? Yes. Mr. Valentine? Yes. Ms. Senbit? Yes. Mr. Mabry? Yes. All right. Ron, Ron can I add real quick? The So resolutions, just, just to highlight so everybody knows, all the resolutions that we pass last year, this year, it's all on our school board page. So anybody can go and review all those resolutions. Just it's newer, so I just wanted to call that out. So good point. Yeah. Good job. All right. Thank you, Gabe. Yes, sir. I will have the last word, Gabe. So absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Very good. Um, we're going to talk about our next meeting agenda. Uh, do, do we just read it off or? Okay, on the list so far, we have officers' elections, uh, student goal report. <coughs> You'll be on the hot seat next week. 22-23 uh, financial closeout, Tri-Tech Skill Center, Healthy Youth Surveys, Policy 2314 Instruction, Use of Outside Media Resources in the Classroom. There's one more thing, right, Tracy, that we're about the uh, the movies that we that is the policy. That's policy. Oh, that's policy. Oh, that's it. Oh, okay. okay. Resources. Okay. So we're all in agreement. Want to add anything? We always have that option of contacting you, right? If, if we have something that we want to bring up. Uh, seeing none, hear none. Our next action will be going into executive session for about 30 minutes. You, you've got all are free to stay here and talk among yourselves for those 30 minutes and you can witness me come back out and close out the meeting. <laughs> yeah, and Diane just reminded me that no business will be taken uh, between that time period or after that time period. So be happy to see you in 30 minutes. Sometimes it might be 40 minutes. I guess I'll be shorter. Come out and let <clears throat> but we'll come out and let you know. <laughs> all right. 